Welcome back YouTube to episode five of the Sportster Adventure Build. In our last step, we wrapped up just about ready to start getting things back together with the powder coat on. We've assembled the bike into a roller and started hanging the accessories off of it, which is now gonna allow me to start the wiring. I've already had a bit of a go at it, but coming up, we'll start to explain how we go about using the old loom and what was there already and biting in with our existing custom wiring. In between episodes, we actually had a bit of time. So I've gone ahead and done a bit of stuff that I'll just catch you up on now. So we've taken the engine cases off, had those wrinkle painted uh, in a black. And then the, the frame was sort of stripped out. Everything was sent to powder coat. We've got the swing arm powder coated, triple clamps and all that sort of stuff. Slapped it back together, put the carburetor on, started to hang the foot pegs and stuff like that. Linked back up all the stock electrics that we're using, the regulator, um, the sensors on the intake, uh, crank angle sensor and all that sort of stuff that links back up to the CDI. And now we've gone through and started to modify the existing uh, wiring loom to suit our new custom application. On the Sportsters, they have a system that they call like a TSR, which is your flasher relay, uh, but it also has like a security system inbuilt into it. And because we're running with these custom buttons, I'm doing away with that system. And we're gonna use the purpose-built moto black box as I do with all my bikes. Um, so that's been totally done away with. All we have to do now is to make sure that the CDI, which we're using will run as well, because it has a signal between the two modules. Uh, it'll either be a signal ground or a single positive. It'll just be a matter of looking at the wiring diagram when it comes to link all of that up. What I've done here is laid the existing loom that I have back on it after I've removed all the stuff that I don't need and shortened a few wires because we've moved the key and things like that. And then I've gone ahead and linked up uh, my push button switches from the handlebars and then started to run the loom for the lighting, which isn't hung yet, but we have the cabling there. This isn't normally the way that I wire my bikes. If you wanna know how I sort of do other motorcycles that are a bit older, um, you can go to the Purpose Built Moto website. I have quite a good blog on doing that sort of thing. Um, it'll explain it in a little bit more detail, but hanging this here, um, now that I've got things in place and I've got my plugs fitted up, I'll start to loom it up with some cable protection. Um, I'm using a split loom here. So if anything goes awry uh, out on the road when we're doing the wide of the mark trip, I can cut a little bit of tape off, split the loom out and get to my wiring. Uh, a similarity that I do have on this, uh, this bike is running everything back here with minimal joins and stuff like that so I can access it easily. I have a terminal strip here that all my lighting and control will run off as well as the onboard air compressor that I have and the USB charging that's going to run like the, uh, the quad lock charger and stuff like that. So if, uh, if I have to test through the lighting system on the bike, all I have to do is whip the seat off and I can access it all right here. It makes it things really easy to test through. So I'm gonna get into looming this up now. Um, I might come back with a few like tips and tricks on how I do that. Um, but yeah, now it's just a matter of getting down to work. So I've just all but finished uh, looming up these cables. As you saw before, they are run already. And there's a little bit to do on the front end here. I'm waiting for a few bits and pieces to come back from paint. But what I try to do when wiring bikes is to keep it as logical and as simple as possible by sort of making it as user friendly as I can. Um, it's not always that easy, but on this one, I've got the new custom loom that I've put on the left-hand side of the bike and any of the existing wiring um, that handles the ignition, uh, CDI coils, the ignition uh, key barrel and stuff here. I've taken that on the right hand side of the bike. So if there is an issue uh, when we're sort of like stuck in the middle of nowhere, there's a problem with my spark plugs or ignition, I know to check on this side with that loom. If it's the opposite uh, with my lighting or something like that, I know to check on the left side and then running that all back to under to un uh, underneath my tail, sorry. So what I'm gonna do from here is start now again on my ignition circuit. So plugging in the regulator rectifier and all that sort of stuff, which is still the stock Harley wiring. 
um, neatening that back up, routing the cables to the sensors and all that sort of stuff. And then carrying on with some small jobs to make sure that once I start connecting the wiring up under the seat, I can just focus there on nothing else and everything I need uh, will be sort of written down with all my color codes and stuff like that. And then I can just connect that up and then start to test through the bike. It's been a massive journey bringing you guys along for the build with us. So now that we're finished, I'm gonna run you through top to tail on everything we've done. front end on this bike was a really pivotal piece for me. I wanted to make sure it had a really aggressive look from the front, but also function as we wanted it to. Being a heavy bike to start off with, I used a large capacity Triumph Tiger front end, um, upside down 56 mil forks with uh, the Triumph triple clamps modified to suit. A front uh, scrambler number plate here, steady LEDs, and then a handmade aluminium front fender. On the bottom here, some, an idea that I had early on in the piece was to create a motocross style fork guard and then have the lights integrated into that for my low beam. So on the road, those are what's gonna be running most of the time. And then with my high beam up the front here. Swapping the uh, front end out, I also gave me the opportunity to put alloy rims on it, lightening the front end again and using a twin disc setup as well, which helps with the front brakes immensely. The braking on this thing is really good. Linked up to a ISR front master cylinder and we also use the ISR clutch lever as well. So coming towards the center of the bike, up top I used a set of Pro Taper Outlaw Tracker handlebars, some van style grips um, and a built well throttle. I also use these West uh, lever guards as well. They're built for sort of road racing, guys use them, um, but I like the look of them and they seem to do the job when protecting the uh, Sportster as well. This thing's just come back from a pretty immense uh, test ride. We've taken it off road for a couple of hours through some pretty uh, heavy dirt roads and stuff like that. So that's the reason that she's well and truly dirty. Um, on the engine side of things, I hand built the two into one Sportster exhaust, stainless steel, uh, front to back, I handmade the muffler out of raw materials. And then as a bit of a different finish I wanted to test out, I sandblasted the whole thing once I'd finished welding it up and then heat treated it with an oxy. So normally you get your headers that brown out uh, nicely on the front, but the color seems to fade towards the back. So I've made that consistent through the whole thing. One thing I didn't expect was it to be quite a porous finish. So things that touch it tend to stick to it quite a lot. Um, it just sort of adds to the character, it makes it look really rough and sort of uh, industrial looking, I guess. Another bit of fabrication that we did on the front here, linking the Electron carb up to a custom air box that I worked with on DNA performance filters. Uh, with Sportsters, the air box is always hanging way out the side, open to rain, dirt, dust, anything that you could throw at it, it's sort of right in the way of anything. So making this bike adventure ready, I wanted to tuck that up out of the way. And the only space that I could find to do that on this bike is where the original coils mount. So the coils have been moved and hung out the other side of the engine and then an air box fabricated out of some sheet aluminium perspex on the end so I can check the condition of the filter, see if it's dirty or not, and linked up with a stainless steel intake manifold that's bolted onto the carburetor. The, um, the design is something that I was really cautious about doing and I, I didn't really know if it was gonna work or not. Um, if you've watched our other build episodes, I talk about it quite a lot, not being sure if it would inhibit the airflow too much, but we threw it on the dyno um, with the setup that we're running at the moment, knobby tires on it. The bike ran 64 horsepower, which isn't much of a gain on stock, if any, I don't think. Um, but I'm sort of happy with that for the purposes of not having to clean my air filter out every day or after every beach ride or dirt road that we go down. Something that I think will make the trip a lot easier with wider the mark. Another trick bit that we put on this bike was 
the foot pegs and how those are mounted. So they were done with some stainless steel bar work using off-road pegs and some Free Spirits parts uh, shifting levers. We used an ISR master cylinder for the rear as well. Making these symmetrical, um, it was something that left a lot of room on the chain drive side because you got to clear the primary and clutch, clutch case on the other side of the bike. So spacing those out symmetrically left enough room for me to squeeze an onboard air compressor in. So this little gadget here, I can pull that hose out, flick a switch, and I can pump my tires up on the run on the side of the road without having to uh, unpack anything and fuck around with batteries and stuff like that, which is something really handy, I think. Well, we'll see. Um, Staying on the back of the bike, I used a Track Dynamics aluminium swing arm to shed a bit more weight. A big thing about this build was trying to um, remove as much weight as possible just to make it a little bit more manageable off-road. So Track Dynamics swing arm, aluminium sprocket from Moto Products, um, and then aluminium crash bars that I've made up as well. KTEC suspension on the rear here. Um, I had those through a mate of mine, Joe at Ride Dynamics, recommended them highly. And after the first test ride off road, they seemed to perform really well. I had to make a few adjustments, but that's all part of the process, I guess. Um, with having the suspension lifted up so much, these shocks are 14 and a half inches long. So that created uh, an odd run on the chain. So I've made a chain tensioner to make sure that that tension is kept on the chain as the suspension travels uh, using a skateboard wheel donated from my mate Jake. So thanks Jake. And fabricating that to run on a spring and operate as the rear suspension operates. Hidden behind my uh, little tool bag here is the tracker tail that I fabricated for this bike. So. I wanted the sort of looks and styling of a tracker because I really like that, but it also had to be functional. So with having uh, this seat on it, it actually creates a lot of space underneath the tail. So I've boxed the tail in with some aluminium sheet there and I can fit uh, my bike cover in case of heavy rain if we're camping out and a toolkit under the seat, um, which on a lot of other bikes like this, you would never really find. So. Having that room under there really opened it up and allowed me to move a lot of the electronics up under the seat as well. Um, and then using some, again, stainless steel bar work, I made sort of an exoskeleton for the tail here to be able to sort of protect it if it gets dropped. And also this is used as a baggage rack. So I have a sissy bar that bolts on here that I can strap a bag to. Um, and then this is sort of acts as a, a cage that I can link up all my straps and stuff to. I like the look of it as well, to be honest with you. I think it looks pretty trick with the green. Seat, super comfortable. One of the most comfortable seats that I've ever put on a custom bike. Plenty of padding so I can be in the saddle for as long as I need to. Trimmed out by Jameson at Timeless Auto Trim. I love this black Nubuck leather. Um, a lot of the times you sort of get stuck using the same materials over and over again, but this has a, a bit of a different finish. I'm hoping it'll age really nicely once it gets muddy and wet and dirty. So using a sort of linear stitch pattern. I think it ties in really well with the bike and it's really comfortable to ride on. The number plate bracket I fabricated as a bit of a, a favor to all the mates that I'm going riding with. Try to stop a bit of roost flying off this huge rear wheel. So I'm running a 17 five and a half rim on this bike with a 170 17 tire. I was running Heidenauer's, which are an awesome tire um, around town and stuff, but we went off road and with the 170, they have like a strip through the center of them that sort of takes away any of the off-road grip that you have in the center of the tire. So I opted for a heavier knobby to use there. Rear brakes, I got a billet-proof rear brake setup, um, commonly used on choppers and stuff, but it seems to do the job really well, linked up to the ISR master cylinder, of course. The uh, foot peg mounts that I was talking about before, you can sort of see those there. You sort of had to get pretty creative with how we position those. Having uh, the standard high mid sets on a Sportster, your feet are far too far forward and it doesn't really allow you to stand up over the bike. It just, you sort of end up right over the tank in that case, which just isn't any good. So custom fabricated those to sort of suit my riding style and positioning in part of sort of having storage anywhere and everywhere on this thing, I used an anti-gravity battery, which has allowed me to stash a run flat um, Motul K 
can in here and then also my spare levers in case, well, when I drop it, I can replace those if need be. So those are stashed nice and safely in there for me. Hopefully won't fall out. Um, moving on to the front, obviously the coil's been relocated, the stand's been extended as well with a uh, K-Tech steering damper on the front. Most of this build was just trying to make it easy for me to handle off-road. So being a, a heavy bike and me being a small bloke, I just sort of wanted to make my life as easy as possible. So the steering damper will help me out sort of going through sand and all that sort of stuff with wobbles up the front, leaving the bars nice and wide also sort of complements that as well. Uh, I guess the final thing was you don't often see custom sportsters using the 1200C tank. I really like the look of it and it gives me enough fuel capacity to do about 300, 330 Ks on. If I swap that out for a sporty peanut, I'd be going nowhere fast and looking for fuel every 10 minutes. So I think it sort of complements it really well using the black and green. And then I had uh, my mate Justin at Pop Band Classics do a vintage Harley logo on the tank, which he hand painted, which is super nice. I guess that's about it on the build. Um, the last, well, lastly, we used some sheet aluminium to create a bash plate. There's a lot of hoses and stuff that run down uh, and cables from the front of the engine or even sort of wrapping up underneath. So that protects those as well as stopping a lot of stuff flying up into the motor when we're off road. It did its job um, when we were out on the test ride the other day. So I'm pretty happy with it. Apart from it being, uh, you know, a little too heavy for a guy my size, I was really impressed with how it handled. I think um, that speaks to a lot of the suspension work that we did as well and trying to pull a lot of the weight off it. It's just a matter of sort of really dialing it in now so I can tackle just about anything, a little bit harder on the front, a little bit softer on the rear. But once I also load this thing up, it might change a few things around as well.